Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Hellbound 2004. It is Black Friday, the first official shopping day of the holiday season, and we're ending it the way it should be ended, with a WAW special event. You probably had to put up with rude people all day, pushy people, asshole people, but right now, you're gonna see a bunch of people kicking each other's asses for a chance to go on to Doomsday 2004 for a WAW title shot against whoever the champion may be, and we await the arrival of the very first participant, and it's gonna be freaking Flax. Here he comes, the mayhem of, the master of mischief and mayhem from Montezuma, freaking Flax, makes his entrance trying to pump up the crowd as we kick off Hellbound 2004 with the Hellbound match. This match made its debut last year. The first two participants were Paul Clement and Sin. You saw Paul Clement make reference to the fact that he was the first in, first out last year. Last year's winner of the Hellbound match was Q. He would go on to Doomsday, where he would defeat FO for the WAW Championship, not only winning the title, but the managerial services of Ivana, which would kick off one of the biggest grudges of 2004 between Q and FO over Ivana, as Carnage from the Cult of the Dead is entrant number two into tonight's Hellbound match. He has orders from Gravedigger to win this match, and if he wins, he must forfeit his title shot to Gravedigger for Doomsday, so there will be no WAW title match, so if either Carnage or Priest is to walk out of here tonight as the winner of the 2004 Hellbound match, we will not see a WAW title match at Doomsday, especially with Miss Moody Star, the president of WAW in the Cult of the Dead. Of course, she's not gonna make Gravedigger defend the title if he doesn't want to. As freaking Flax trying to hit clotheslines on Carnage to no avail, Carnage not falling, catches a headbutt to the stomach. That hunches Carnage over for a second. Flax trying to stay on top of Carnage, but Carnage catches Flax in the stomach, sends him off the opposite side with an Irish whip, but Flax reverses it, and he gets a Luthez press. Luthez press there from freaking Flax, except no punches, just slapping the bald head of Carnage. As Flax now running to the outside, trying to run away from this monster of the Cult of the Dead. Carnage now charging a freaking Flax. Flax ducks, goes at Carnage, and we got a Hurricane Rana. Actually, excuse me, a head scissors takedown. That was no Hurricane Rana. I don't know what the hell I was thinking there. Freaking Flax there, what a move, taking Carnage down. What do we got? Entry number three. It's going to be Rocco. Where's the Halloween Hellraiser? There he is, the Halloween Hellraiser, making it into the ring. He says that tonight is all about Halloween, and the Halloween Hellraiser, that remains to be seen if Rocco is going to walk out of here, the number one contender for Doomsday. He flips that coin to determine the fate. What is it? Rocco tricked Carnage. He made Carnage think that they were going to go after Flax. Flax equally is confused, not expecting an arch nemesis like Rocco to help him out. And we got a strike punch that sends Carnage into the corner. Rocco and flicking, freaking Flax trying to do some damage here to Carnage, trying to keep him down, trying to get an advantage to get Carnage down and get him out of this Hellbound match. I'm quite surprised that none of these men have gone after weapons as it is no disqualifications. Pinfalls count anywhere here in the Hellbound match. Freaking Flax now climbing up to the top rope, but Carnage shakes the top, and Freaking Flax is hung up over the top turnbuckle. Goes for a chair shot. Rocco hits Carnage with a chair shot, and there's the weapons. No disqualifications. Pinfalls count anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Last man standing wins the WAW, excuse me, wins a number one contendership shot to the WAW championship at Doomsday. Freaking Flax and Rocco still double teaming. Rocco now hammering away on the neck. Both men trading back and forth, double axe handles. We're awaiting the arrival of Priest from the Cult of the Dead. He's about to make his way to... Well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, I've been cut off by a vignette for the soon-to-debut Sky, who is going to make his WAW debut next week here on WAW. It remains to be seen what kind of form he will debut in, but one thing is for sure, in recent weeks, he's been interrupting the cult of the dead with, um, with his uh, vignettes. 
Last week, he interrupted the Priest and Rocco match with one of his vignettes saying that he was coming to WAW. And once again here tonight, interrupting the Cult of the Dead when he interrupts Priest's entrance to the ring for this Hellbound match with another one of his vignettes saying that the sky is the limit. Get ready because Sky is coming to WAW and he is coming next week. What do we got here on the top rope? We're going to have Montezuma, Halloween. What's it going to be? Neither because Priest and Carnage both shake the top ropes and get Rocco and Flax hung up over the top rope. Rocco and Priest in the far corner fighting it out. Freaking amazing, excuse me, freaking Flax. One half of freaking amazing off the top. Double axe handle. Both men fall. Carnage and Priest fall from the double axe handles from Rocco and freaking Flax, but Priest sits right up and we await the arrival of the former two-time WAW champion, Epo. Here he is now. The fans hate him now. His new attitude, his new look, his new everything. Everything about Epo the fans hate. He is now, he used to be a big fan favorite and then he got frustrated when his girl left him and he lost his title and he blew the subsequent rematches. And now, double teaming Rocco, excuse me, double teaming with Rocco. Rocco turns on Epo, got him, boulder dash. Excuse me, that was an avalanche, but Priest hits Rocco with a chair, knocking him down. Freaking Flax now hitting to the outside. Flax grabbing a chair, Carnage just waiting there for him. Kicks the chair right into the stomach of freaking Flax, sending the mass Montezuma of mischief, mischief and mayhem down. Carnage down across the back with a steel chair shot, but Epo right there to stop it. Priest and Rocco in the ring. Looks like Priest just jammed Rocco's head into the turnbuckle. Might have been a chair set up on that top rope. Looks like it might have been because now Priest has a steel chair and he's now heading to the outside. Epo just caught an STO from Carnage on the floor. Now Priest armed with that steel chair going after Flax. Flax throws the chair at Priest's midsection and runs away. And now F.O. catches a chair shot across the back. What a stiff chair shot from Priest of the Cult of the Dead. The silent sermon from the Cult of the Dead with direct orders from the Dark Stalker Gravedigger, the WAW champion, that if he too is to win, here comes Jersey. Jersey with a score to settle with F.O. If Priest wins, he's going to forfeit his title shot too as the former ketchup and mustard now on the outside doing battle. Jersey threw Epo into the brutality pole. Jersey with tons of momentum, tons of anger towards Epo, now beating him with a giant bamboo stick. What anger and aggression coming out of the wicked one. He said earlier on tonight, earlier on today, excuse me, in a taped interview segment that he does not care about winning this Hellbound match. For the first time in his six year career, the objective is not to try and win. His objective is to make sure that neither FO or Dirty Dealer wins. That is his only goal here in tonight's Hellbound match. He doesn't care what happens to him. He doesn't care what happens to others. He doesn't care about the title shot because he feels that he could take out the champion at any time. He just wants to make sure that his enemies, Epo and the Dirty Dealer, the big top players, do not walk out of here tonight with a guaranteed title shot at Doomsday. What is going on? Zipper off the ladder! What a zipper by Epo from that ladder to the floor, sending Jersey crashing off the ladder with the zipper, going for a cover, but walk over there to break it up. I don't think he understands that this is elimination. We got a two count as Jersey kicks out and Epo hits Rocco with the baseball bat. And again in the neck. And here's a dirty... Well, if you didn't know it before, now you know Sky is definitely making his debut here in WAW. Shatter not wasting any time after the Dirty Dealer came out. Not waiting the one and a half minutes to two minutes. I don't know exactly what the increments are, but he didn't even wait the time. As soon as Dealer got out and Jersey started fighting with, Jersey and Dealer started fighting. Jersey took the upper hand and got both Epo and Dealer down for the double deuce off the ring apron. And then Shatter didn't waste any time. He's out here with that kendo stick. Just broke it right over the head of Priest. And Priest coming back on the offensive. He had that kendo stick labeled shattered there, shattered, shattered here, shattered everywhere. Shattered over his skull by shatter and it had no effect on the silent sermon 
of the Cult of the Dead as Dirty Dealer sends freaking Flax crashing down with a fist. Dealer trying to get over to his partner, Epo, who's being assaulted by Jersey. Jersey now coming after Dealer, catches a chair shot in the head from the outlaw, the recent inductee into the WAW Hall of Fame for his accomplishments in his in-ring career and just outside the ring accomplishments on November the 12th, the Friday night. Dirty Dealer was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Dealer goes to swing a freaking flex, but he runs away as Jersey catches a double wide, double thick kendo stick over the head. Shatter now catches a chair shot from the Dirty Dealer. Priest gets hit in the head with a cowbell and drumsticks. He's being double teamed by Flax and Dealer. And here comes Paul Clement. Oh, catches a kendo stick and a chair. Big top players assault Paul Clement right as he comes through the, the ring curtain there. Freaking Flax catches one to the back and then Paul and Epo trying to trade back and forth. And Priest catches Epo with the Mongolian chops. And then a double wide, double thick kendo stick shot right to the head. Sends the former WAW champion onto his back. Paul Clement entering the ring as Priest caught a chair shot from the Dirty Dealer. Priest sits up. My God. Dirty Dealer has one of the toughest and hardest steel chair shots in WAW history. And he caught that right to the head. And now Priest. Again, he's still standing, and again, number four, five, and Priest finally falls after five of those double wide, double thick kendo stick shots right to the head. First the chair shot, he's not sitting up, oh, there he goes. I thought FO might have finally kept Priest down, but to no avail, Priest sits up, he's getting back up, what's Jersey gonna do? Kick Priest in the stomach. We gotta... New Testament on the Priest. That's gotta do it. Priest is down. Why isn't anybody pinning this monster? Why isn't Jersey pinning him? Priest having a hard time sitting up. Not as easy as before. Rocco just caught a kendo stick shot right to the head. That double wide, double thick stick. And Jersey now comes attacking with crutches, hitting both big top players. Priest getting up to his feet finally. Who is gonna take this monster down? He caught a New Testament, he caught a chair shot. He caught all kinds of attacks from everybody. Now Paul Clement grabbing a steel chair. As Priest goes after, freaking Flax, and Priest catches the chair shot. And we got a dirty drop by the Dirty Dealer. That's gonna do it. Priest is gonna be done. Jersey and Epo in the ring. Jersey trying to get in the ring. Epo leaving the ring. Carnage and Shatter doing battle there in the ring. Rocco wants his trick. Priest back up to his feet and Shatter hits Priest over the back of the head with trick. Priest charges with a boot and he gets a reflector for his trouble and he sits up. No, he's backed out and he sits up again. Priest sat up, fell back down and then sat right back up immediately. Freaking flex now. Maybe Flax is gonna try something on Priest. Hits him with a kendo stick in the knee. As Epo and Jersey went crashing through those tables. Rocco with a rock out. Priest still standing. Priest is still standing. We got Flax Master from Flax. Down with a Flax Master. That's gotta do it. We got one, two, and three. What? What? This Moody Star wouldn't count to three. What is that bitch's problem? Priest is down. He was down for the three. Jersey trying to get the referee's attention in the ring to come to the outside and make a pin. As Jersey has Star by the hair, but he caught a record shot right to the head. Flax once again. Flax Master again on Priest. Dealer hits Priest for good measure. We got one. The pin, pin got broken again. We got one. Two and three. Priest is eliminated. I don't know what was going through FO's P brain when he tried breaking that pin on Priest. I figured he'd want Priest out just as much as the next guy, but he tried to save Priest in a way by attacking freaking Flax. Priest up to his, well, sitting up, not up to his feet quite yet. Carnage angry that his cult of the dead member got eliminated. That can't make Gravedigger any too happy either. 
as Carter's now heads in the ring, hits Paul Coleman with a chair shot, as Priest leaves Effo with something to think about on his way out, a kendo stick shot over the head. So now Priest has been eliminated. We've got Shadow, we've got Carnage, we've got Paul Clement, we've got Effo, Freakin' Flax, Rocco, Dirty Dealer, Jersey. We gotta cover. Dealer, what's going on here? Dealer catches a stop time shot right to the back from Shatter. Looked like Dealer might have been trying to pin Effo. Dealer takes Effo down, and there, excuse me, took Shatter down. Now the big top player is double teaming Shatter, who is busted wide open. Freaking Flax with a stop sign shot to Effo as Dealer continued to attack Shatter. Shatter catches a baseball shot. Baseball bat shot off the head. Now Jersey with the crutches, waiting for Flax to get up. Catches the crutch right over the back, and freaking Flax falls over. What a violent match this has been thus far, ladies and gentlemen. But I think all the violence in this match will pale in comparison to the main event of Hellbound 2004. It will be a careers match, a brutalities match, excuse me, a brutality match. The way you win this match is you make your opponent stay down for a pin, you make him tap out, and you make him bleed. The person that does that walks out the WAW champion. The participants, the current champion, Gravedigger, the Dark Stalker, the leader of the Cult of the Dead, the Challenger, Captain Amazing, the Blue Crusader, one half of Freaking Amazing. These two men are gonna put their bodies and their careers on the line in the main event. The Gravedigger is not only putting his career on the line, he's putting the careers of Carnage, Miss Moody Star, Minion and Priest, all on the line. If Gravedigger does not successfully defend his WAW Championship as Jersey New Testament's dealer, we got two and three dirty dealers eliminated. If Gravedigger does not successfully walk out of Hellbound 2004 with the WAW Championship, he, Carnage, Priest, Minion, and Star all lose their jobs. But if Captain Amazing fails to walk out with his very first WAW title, he will no longer be employed by WAW. Freaking Amazing will be no more, and Captain Amazing will be no more in WAW as Jersey hits a corner pocket. Different setup on the ring apron. No way. Corner pocket followed up by a diamond dust off the apron onto a trash can. What a diamond dust driving Effo's face right into the trash can. Oh, Paul Clement catches that kendo stick shot. And again, Stu, uh, was it wasn't a kendo stick. It was a frying pan. Jersey in the ring. What's it going for now? We got a leap of faith off that ladder to the floor. Jersey moving that trash can out of the way. What is he going to do with Effo? We've got battered bodies everywhere. We've got broken weapons everywhere. But we still have a big crowd of hungry competitors who want a guaranteed WAW title match under their terms at Doomsday. The winner of this match, not only do they get the title shot, but they also get to decide what kind of match it will be. I wonder why Bianca Wild is just kind of standing there at the entranceway. I don't exactly know what she's trying to do. Not exactly distracting anybody at all. Effo trying to hit on Bianca. This pisses off Shatter. Apparently Effo and Dirty Dealer had their ways with Bianca in a limo before she even made it to WAW. So who knows what this girl's past might be. Might be a little shady. Might have a lot of history in the backs of limos if what Effo and Dirty Dealer say is true. Shatter sends his woman off to the back. Good riddance to her. She shouldn't be at ringside anyway. She's not in this match. She has no reason to be out here. No managers are out here. Paul Clement gets eliminated by Shatter with the reflector through the breakthrough board. Paul Clement, not the first out, not the second out, but the third eliminated this year. Paul Clement coming up short once again in his bid to try and become a WAW champion as Jersey leapt off the top of that ladder. And he's got Shatter's brass knuckles. Shatter's been using these in matches recently. And Crack Shatter 
with the brass knuckles. Jersey gonna cover. We go one, two, and three. Shatters eliminated. Jersey is an eliminating machine here. He's eliminated Dirty Dealer, and he's eliminated Shatter on quite a roll for a guy who doesn't care if he wins this match or not. I don't know what happened there, but Epo caught a punch right to the clowny nuts from Jersey. Looks like Jersey might have a whip or a frying pan or something, and he's beating the crap out of Epo. We are now down to it looks like five competitors, Rocco, Freaking Flax, Carnage, Jersey, and Epo. Rocco over to the side of the ring there. Freaking Flax about to be powerbombed. No, grabs a hold of one of those bars and kicks Carnage in the head about 20 times, dropping Carnage down. What is Jersey setting Epo up for there in the far corner of the apron there? What is he doing? Off the turnbuckle, New Testament! Off the apron, onto the floor, that is gonna do it. Jersey is gonna have this match. Well, this bout over Epo, this fall one, heading up to the top, and we got an Epo splash from outer space. We got one, two, and three. Jersey gets his third elimination of this match, eliminating Epo, keeping Epo, and keeping the big top players from walking out of here with the guaranteed title shot. So Jersey's only goal of the evening is successful. He eliminated not only one, but both members of the big top players here in this Hellbound match. And you can see the Wicked One is obviously spent. We are now down to four competitors. Freaking Flax, Rocco, Carnage, and Jersey. It would almost seem like Carnage is outnumbered because Rocco joined forces with Freaking Flax earlier in the night. Oh! Carnage is really outnumbered. Epo hits Carnage and Rocco with the kendo stick, obviously upset over his elimination. But as I was saying, it would seem that Carnage is outnumbered. Rocco and freaking Flax joined forces earlier tonight. Well, maybe not. Rocco and Jersey are going to do battle. And then Jersey just doesn't like really anybody. Oh, no. What's he going to do with Flax? Off the apron. Press slam through the breakthrough board. If this were legacy, Flax would be eliminated. But this is hellbound. And it's not over till it's over. We got one. What is Star doing? We got one, two, and three. Carnage gets the elimination of freaking Flax. As Carnage gets knocked over with that lap. He, he gave Rocco a weapon. What are we going to do? What are we going to see here? Doing a little sword fighting. A little bit of a Ken Poe possibly here out of the Wicked One. I'm told that the Wicked One might like himself a little bit of Kenpo like swinging pegs at people, whipping people's asses. There's some Kenpo for you, hitting Rocco right in the head with that little beam there, cracking it right over the Halloween Hellraiser's skull. Jersey up on the ring apron. What's he going to do with Rocco now? He's got both of them ready and armed. Carnage up from behind. Carnage from behind with a chokehold. The Concha Hatame. Locking it on, he's got it locked. Will Jersey tap out? And Jersey tapped out to the Kanta Hajime from Carnage. It is now down to the Halloween Hellraiser and Carnage, a member of the Cult of the Dead and an anti-cult member as Rocco hits the Rocco. That's gonna do it. We gotta have a new number one contender. We got one, two, and what? Star once again showing bias towards her call to the dead members, pulling the referee away from counting Rocco's pin. Earlier tonight, she wouldn't count the three on Priest at first until the second referee made the count. Rocco, plenty upset, trying to charge at Star. But here comes Carnage, catches a punch to the midsection and gets knocked on again by Rocco. We gonna cover? One, two, and Star once again hits the referee. Pushing him away, go on one, two, and she's got something in her eye? Why'd that bitch even bother counting? What was the point? She could have just hit the referee and let Carnage get up. What? Rocco, no way, he's gonna do it. Rock out on the president of WAW. Rocco has done what many of the employees have wanted to do, and that is rock out the president. And he gets, no, tried for a rock out on Carnage. Carnage gets him, STO! 
We are running out of time, ladies and gentlemen. We are just about out of time in this half of Hellbound. Hopefully, we're going to be able to bring you every bit of this match. But if we don't, be sure to stay tuned for the second half of Hellbound 2004, in which you will see the remainder of this match if it need be. And you will see Gravedigger versus Captain Amazing in a brutality match where careers on the line, lives are on the line, and the WAW Championship is on the line. Rocco hits Carnage in the stomach. Rocco slam. He got a Rocco slam. Could this do it? We got one, two, and three. Rocco wins. We are out of time, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned for more Hellbound.